Welcome to Make Shit Happen. My guest today is Kim White. Me and Kim recently connected on Clubhouse app. We were in a room and Kim said a couple of words that really resonated with me. And right after the uh, the room ended, I messaged her on her Instagram and I said, Kim, I, I would love to talk to you more. And somehow we decided that I'm going to have Kim on my podcast episode. And Kim, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. I know you're busy and you know, you're sitting in this cool room right there that I look at. And uh, you just told me that uh, you and your husband have been traveling and you are in your fifth wheel, right? Like in motorhome right now. Fifth wheel. Tell us a little bit. First of all, I, I want, I'm curious to know more. I'm sure my, my audience is a little more curious about it. So what do you do? Tell me, tell me about it. Well, thank you for inviting me first. I appreciate you. And um, well, I do digital nomad kind of things. I actually publish a magazine, a podcast, teach business all while we're traveling. And my husband is actually an industrial electrician. So we go where the projects that he wants to do are. And I work right alongside him. And we we have an amazing life in a in a fifth wheel <laughs> awesome so so basically he he travels to wherever the jobs are at he works mm -hmm. while he's working you're doing you know because you're working uh, you work remotely from home anyways right so, yes, so and you make it happen tell me a little bit you know and it's hard for people to see it uh you know if they're listening to the podcast on audio um so they can definitely go on my youtube channel and watch this in video at Life of Super Sammy Z is the YouTube uh, channel. Uh, but go ahead and tell us about these little post-it notes that are stuck <laughs> in that room. I actually teach a class called Sticky Note Time, which is, that's what we do in the backdrop of it is sticky notes. Because I think if you get clear about what you want, you can have it. I think if you don't get clear, you will not make progress and you will still be wanting what you want years from now because you didn't get clear about it. So I teach a process that I learned how to get clear. Okay, so walk me through it. What what do you do? You write stuff on your goals or I mean, or steps or how does, what is it? Well, I think you have to start with emptying everything out of your head, everything that you think about, you dream about, all of that, because you will tell on yourself, basically. You have to get honest with yourself about what you really want. If you say you want something, but all of the evidence is otherwise, I will, I will say, you know, I challenge that because we will make things happen that we really want to happen. Mm. So that's, that's the beginning of the process is to get it all out on paper and start clearing it, you know, start going through and seeing if that's really what we want. Awesome. Awesome. And, and so uh, you do that class online and if someone wants to sign up for it, how, I mean, how do they sign up for it? And um, they can message me, but I only do it quarterly. I, okay. I only do it because it's, it's pretty intense. Uh -huh. And I started it in my mastermind. Like I, I lead a mastermind and that's where it actually started. And everybody, everybody I know that does not get traction needs to learn how to get clear. That, that is my opinion. Got you. And your email address is Kim white at my sexy business.com. Correct. Yes, sir. So they can reach out and then we'll, we'll talk more about your social media and everything. So Kim, I saw that, you know, what you had told me uh, when we were talking, that your mission is to empower people. Yes, okay. Sir. And and especially, especially women and who have come from place of poverty, prejudice, abuse, domestic violence. And that's something that that you know is one of my passions also to talk about that because women do feel like they 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 can't get help. They feel like they, they're subjected to that and that's something that's, that becomes a reality. So I love it that you that you do that. If you want, can we talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. I, I have come from those places is why I feel like I am 100% qualified to speak to that. 
is I have left behind a lot of the things you just listed because I found out there was a better way. Uh I found out there were things I didn't have to tolerate that I could make a way. And sometimes when you don't have a table invitation, Mm -hmm. you have to make your own table. And so that's kind of what I've done along the way is I have created my own platforms and my own tables to invite other people to and empower them to do the same. Okay. And so part of that, you just tell women, hey, listen, it's not okay, you know, for for this and you don't have to do this. And you said that, uh, you said that you come from the same place. Uh, do, you, do you mind sharing a little bit about that? No, I, I do not mind. Um, I actually spent 13 years being physically and mentally abused and didn't know I had a choice. Just to be honest, you know, you, you don't want to get a divorce. You don't want to leave someone that you've committed your life to. That is not something that you want to do. And so I went through that cycle of, you know, listening to what he was saying And he said he would take my babies away from me. That motivated me to take anything he dished out because I didn't know, I didn't know what would happen if I left. And when one night, and it was a very hard night, but one night I got a knock on the door about nine o'clock. It was way after dark. We lived out in the middle of nowhere Mm -hmm. and it was a policeman. And to this day, I still look for this policeman. I don't even know his name. But he called me out and he said, we know what is going on and we want you to know you don't have to do that anymore. And those words reverberated through my whole being because that was the first time anyone had had known what was going on and actually told me I didn't have to do it. And he changed my whole world because I then made a plan. I don't think it's smart to just leave like abruptly you can cause yourself you know to get in very scary situations but took my babies and we ran for our lives literally I ended up being homeless with the clothes on our back for for a period of time because I didn't have I didn't have another option he had isolated us Uh so once we got out I had to I had to figure things out, but I am telling you that was one of the best decisions in my entire life was to do that because I really didn't have to do that anymore. So you said you left abruptly or did you make a plan to leave? I made a plan because I knew just to be point blank, he would kill us if if I did not make a plan and, and be able to get away far enough that he couldn't get to it, you know, to me. Because he was, he was that far, um, violent, violent. Yeah. I do. I just want to watch my words because I don't want to trigger anyone, but it it is very, very violent. Very violent. Uh, And and, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry you went through that. I mean, nobody should, but there's a lot of women in this world who go through this every day. Right. And, uh, and, and, and it's, it's sad. It's sad. I, I had, uh, personally, um, I talk about it because my I had an aunt who who went through that, uh, you know, and and seeing her go through that, I mean, it will it will it will upset me. Even though I was a little kid at that time, and uh, nobody should should have to go through that. Um, I mean, but other than that, I mean, you know, even even men go through ver- verbal abuse and women go through verbal abuse, and and uh, it's just just toxic. It's bad, and I mean, you know, either way, one men or women should be, should be able to get out of it. Uh, How did you realize once the cop came in, the police officer, and he told you, you shouldn't do that. How, and what made you think, you know, what, that you're valuable, you, you can do this. Well, how did you bottle up? How did you sum up the courage? Because most people don't have that courage, especially, you know, with, especially knowing the fear, where am I going to go? I'm going to be homeless. What am I going to do? Because you can really put yourself in a scary situation. There are bad people out there. Yes. Well, I I will be honest. I think it was a necessary courage that happened because I literally was putting my babies down on cardboard, broken down cardboard boxes in the back of a warehouse, 
and staying awake all night, you know, watching over them. And, and honestly, I was praying that I would find an answer because I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I didn't know how to do the next thing. So to me, it was the, the courage that required my babies depended on me. You know, it wasn't even about me at that point. It was about finding a way to get them out of that situation because no one wants to be, you know, the one that does not take care of their babies. And it was hard. They thought it was an adventure, thankfully. They were young enough and I I did not share the, you know, the details with them, obviously. I did not want to to have them go through that also. So they were kind of a little bit oblivious, which helped um, that, they, that they were young and they didn't question much. We were on an adventure and it was kind of like camping for them. While the whole time I am struggling to figure out how I'm gonna feed them and, and you know, get us someplace safe. Um, how old were they at, that, at this time? Um, I believe that they were three and five. Okay, and this is 13 years ago? Uh, no, this has been a long time ago. My youngest is 31. So this oh, been... oh so this is this is very long time ago. This <laughs> yes. is over tw- so this is over 28 about 28 years ago. Kim now now you at the, at, the, at this time where you're at, I mean, you know, 28 years ago, there was not that many, you know, chapters now. I mean, the world has changed. It has become a little better and easier. You know, there's women's shelter, there's there's uh, you know churches that 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 sponsor at that time it's something that nobody wants to talk about right and and the society has these these fears and nobody wants to talk about it so it, I, i'm not going to say it was socially acceptable but it was something that socially you don't want to talk about you don't want to you know you know and and you took the courage you became homeless you you left how did you ever get to the next step how did you pick yourself how did you How did you, what happened? If you tell us a little bit. Well, it's been a long journey and I love, I love being able to share it because I think it does give hope to people that are like me, you know, that are, I came from poverty. I didn't come from a wealthy family. Um, So the next thing I did was try to figure out how I could make enough money to Uh support my babies. And the thing that came up was, and, and, you know, this is not a, proud moment of course but there were some guys that were doing an auction and they had all this stuff left over that didn't sell and they were just going to throw it in the dumpster and I asked him if I could have it and I took that stuff to the flea market and sold that stuff for enough money to go and buy some more stuff to sell that way I could keep my babies with me you know the flea market was not some place that my ex-husband would show up so it was and I was always guarded but that's really what started the ball rolling of me getting out of that situation is I had to find a way to make money but I couldn't leave my babies anywhere so so you you started you started with a little entrepreneurial journey I did okay. so you just started doing the trade buying selling buying selling and you're selling at the flea market is that a five-day flea market seven-day flea market or three-day flea market what is that um, it was a two day. It okay, a Saturday, day. Sunday. Mm-hmm. Saturday, yeah. Sunday. So you, so you, so you started doing that. You started, you started, and then that kind of got the ball rolling a little bit. Yes, sir. I okay. then started back when eBay started. Uh huh. I actually was one of the first ones on there because I figured out I could take some of the things that I was selling and make more money by putting them online. Okay. So I learned how to do that and became, you know, one of the power sellers on, on eBay, which it, it's just a progression. Like nothing was sexy about the process, you know, from the start to, to the today. Uh, and, but, but, you know, it all, you know, they say necessity is mother of all inventions. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, when it's, when it's needed, you know, you do it. And especially when you're a mother, I mean, you know, you'll do whatever, whatever it takes, you know, to, uh, to, to get that done. And, and I mean, I have stories about my mother who, you know, did, did all the sacrifices for us. And, and, uh, and I mean, you know, when you're mom, when you're mother, when you, 
when there is no when there is nothing else you can do you'll do whatever it, it takes to make sure that you know, keep your kids safe keep food in their stomach and and I, I mean i mean look at you today i mean you know you're i see those magazines in the back right there with your <laughs> sexy business right there you you are you're talking about you know be the hero mindset matters i mean you're 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 doing everything remotely uh what what really attracted uh um, you to me was this term that you called entrepreneurial math which which i'm like i talk about it all the time because business owners if they generate a million dollar revenue they think it's all their money and they don't think about that they got to pay the the you know it's not their money only maybe six to eight percent is their money maybe 10 if they're really good operators they still got to pay uncle sam you know so i want to talk about that you know you talked about the entrepreneurial math tell me tell me tell us in detail what is entrepreneurial math well i want to say i believe in being honest and transparent and i yeah. think that entrepreneurial math is just the opposite of that i can tell you i made a million dollars but it's not really the right it's not really being honest if it took me a million and one dollars to make it so if I'm misleading you with entrepreneurial math by telling you I've made this big amount of money, but I'm not being honest about how much it took to make that money, uh -huh. I think that's a good example of entrepreneurial math. And you're right about the percentages. You know, making the money is not, it is not the entrepreneurial math part. It's the telling the lie of this is how much money I make and not telling how much the profit is, or, yeah. you know, you can have revenue, but there's also profit. And I think there's a big difference. And I, I am sad to say that most people use entrepreneurial math instead of just being honest. Yeah. And, 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 and that is true. So, and why do people do that? I think it's a pride thing. I think people want to look better than what they, you know, smarter i think they want to look like they're more successful which is sad to me because i think we all have our own definition of success some people would think us traveling the country in our fifth wheel would be horrible but to us it's it's you know it's really successful for us because we're doing what we love to do every day we're we are running you know sexy businesses and sexy projects that we love we're empowering other people in the process. So to us, we can't be, you know, we can't be any happier to do what we're doing. But somebody else's definition of success is the big fancy, you know, Rolls Royce and the 15,000 square foot home and, you know, all of those things. But if they're using entrepreneurial math, they may be over their head in debt for those things as well so i think yeah. that that's just a you you dropped a lot of really amazing things when you came into that clubhouse room you really shared a lot of truth when you came in and i was so so happy i was like cheering you know behind the microphone i was cheering you on because people need to hear the truth they need to hear those things the messy bits to business yeah. they caught so it's anyway, not it's not all it's not all sexy it looks sexy at the end <laughs> you know um I, and I'll, I'll share that about that one second but i'm gonna ask you one more thing okay. so are you telling me entrepreneurial math is when people lie about how much profit did, did they make okay because if they say hey look you know we generated a million dollar but we in in the process we lost three hundred thousand dollars I mean, they, they hide that fact and that's what entrepreneurial math is, in your opinion? Yes, sir. Okay. It's the illusion. I think that that's the difference is they're giving an illusion of success instead of real success. And I think that that's the problem. That's the dishonest part is, I mean, if you tell me you make millions of dollars, I don't, I don't care that you say that. But if you say that trying to lead somebody to buy something from you because you have made all that money, but you don't tell them it took you 
that many millions plus one dollar, then that to me is deceiving. Yeah, deceiving and being dishonest. First of all, uh, a lot of a lot of business owners, you know, when they make some money, they they lose a factor. And you know what that factor is? Is the biggest thing is called humility. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 I feel like when you lose humility, it's it's really is the starting of something really bad. You know, it's a downward trajectory. It's, it's, it's bad. Uh, whatever you are, if you're making money, whatever, I mean, congratulations, kudos to you. But you got to stay humble, you know, in the process. And, and a lot of people don't understand the term profit. Okay. People, are, business people sometimes are scared of profit. And they have this, and some people, they have this misconception that revenue and profit are the same, which is not true also, right? Um, and you know, like 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 uh, you said that I was in the I was in that clubhouse and I was talking about some of the stuff, and and some of the stuff is not sexy. You know, working seventy hours when you start your business is not sexy at all, right? right. You, you know, working six days, seven days a week is not sexy. Uh, uh, you know, not be able to go take vacations. You know, for uh, to get your business stabilized it is not sexy. Somebody was in that room before me and they were like, man, he was hitting it off. And, you know, but then one day they took their vacation and the lights came on and he was like, he had that aha moment. It was like, it can run without me. Okay. And, and that's great that it can run without you. But what you do after that matters more than anything, right? Because if you start thinking the business can run without me and you just stay home and don't go to work, Guess what? There will be no business. You know, my, 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 my favorite line is this, which I said that, and I, I don't know if you like it or not. If you're not loyal to your business, your business will not be loyal to you. It's, it's a marriage. It's a partnership. It's, it's, a, it's a friendship. Like, let's just say me and you are friends, and, and we, go to the, we go to a restaurant and go eat, right? And I pick up the tab the first time, right? And then we go back again the second time, I'm forced to pick up the tab again the second time. <laughs> and then we go back again the third time and I'm picking up the tab the third time. Guess guess what's going to happen? Most probably there will be no fourth time. Okay? It's just like that in business. If you, you know, if you are not loyal to your business, your business is not going to be loyal to you. I mean, I don't care what anybody says, but but that's just that's just the truth. Okay? Um, I wrote it down when you said it, just so you know. I love oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> on a sticky note. On a, on a sticky note of all things. <laughs> on a sticky note. You can, you, can put, you can put it under there. Sam Zavery. <laughs> I will. I promise I will. <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, and, and, and you know, so, I mean, I, I love that. I mean, so is, if someone wants to know more about business, is that one of the things that you do like in your mastermind or, I mean, because that, you, you know, there's, there's little tidbits that, that can help people. I think, tell me a little bit about these masterminds you do, or, you know, these topics that you talk about. Well, one of the things that I, I, I am not everyone's flavor. I'm going to say that right out, out up front okay. because you can't be, you can't be. No, but I am very polarizing on purpose right out of the gate because I don't want to waste anyone's time. And one of the things that makes me polarizing, especially for the mastermind, is if you're not willing to be honest, you are not welcome. It's an invite only. And I just don't have time for someone who is not going to do what I call inventory. And it's a process we do that that you have to be honest. You don't even have to share your numbers with anybody. It's not that kind of honest. It's you have to be honest with you. Mm. You have to look at your, you know, things that you have going on right now, your assets that you have, your numbers that you have, and get really honest about the things like we just talked about, revenue and profit and, and the things in your business that are working and not working. Yeah. yeah. So that's the first, I think that's probably the first layer. If someone is not honest and they're pushing back because of pride, I can't help them. 
I, that is not something I am willing to do because I, in the beginning, did waste time doing that. And one of my, as a matter of fact, my husband coined this phrase because he heard me say this several times in, di in a different way, but he, he coined the phrase that I don't take clients who have money and no sense. Uh. <laughs> so that's that's pretty much like that, that's pretty much how the mastermind works i will get in the trenches with you and i will help you do what you're wanting to do but i won't do it if you're not honest and i won't do it if you're not there in the trenches like you said working on your business i uh. think being loyal to your business requires that layer of honesty yeah that, that that is that that is true so so the mastermind the topics are i mean and and i'm just going to read it be the hero mindset matters confidence is sexy overcoming trauma book to business how to survive the loss of a child collaboration is like a magic wand what i want to be when i grow up clarity begins process and many others correct and so let, let's talk about minds you know mindset matters because i think everything revolves around mindset I want to know your definition about that. I think how you think about things is how your life is. Like, I think if you are thinking negatively all the time, you're going to find all the negative that can possibly be in the world for you. I, I have gone through some stuff, like I've gone through some really negative things, but had I stayed there, I would have been destroyed. But because I chose to not stay there, and I don't even mean physically, I mean mentally, because I did not stay there with the lack of self-worth, you know, I was told bad things. I was told I, you know, at one point, someone even told me I was too ugly that even God could not use me. Like that, that was really hard to take. And I took it very personal for a while. But I had to change my mind about that and realize, you know what, that's a lie. And I'm going to be honest with myself about myself as well. Mm -hmm. I have, I have weaknesses, I have strengths, but I am worth the effort. I am worth those things, no matter anyone else's opinion. Mm -hmm. Of course. So I someone, think someone, else, someone else's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And it's honestly none of my business. You know, if someone is talking bad about me or saying something, it's not my business. My yeah. business is to be the best me I can be and show up the very best way I can. I have a phrase and I do a, a thing on Mondays called Messy Monday. And mm -hmm. it's the behind the scenes part of what business looks like because I don't want people to be deceived by the, you know, the glamorous things you see on social media. There's messy behind those doors. and being messy is beautiful to me when it shows progress. I will show up messy and do it the very best I can. And guess what? I'm going to learn something and then I'm going to show up a little less messy next time because I've learned something. Mm. So I think having that mindset of showing up with as much as you know how to show up with, you know, and doing the things that you can do and having that positive attitude, I think it does make all the difference in whether you're, and you mentioned trajectory. I think it changes the trajectory of your life when you get to that place. I, I love it, love it, love it. And I mean, everything revolves around mindset, right? You're negative, it's negative. You, you know, um, I don't know where did I read that, but I am is, and I, and I always say this, I believe it truly, I am is the two strongest words in uh, English language, you know, I am, I will, but you know, I am, I mean, I am able to do this. I mean, and it'll happen. I'm not able to do this. And guess what? It's not able, it's just not going to happen. And, <laughs> and, and uh, so, and you talk about, so I like this messy Mondays and, and you said pride, right? And I want to talk about more about these topics, but since we are there, you said pride in business people, and some business people have so much pride that they don't want to accept their fault and stuff like that. Um, is there something, and I'm not going to, I don't want you to take any names, but let's just go back and say, hey, there was this one instance that you were helping a client and the pride was so bad 
that it just killed everything. Would you like to share something with us? I would love to, um, and I definitely won't mention any names, but I was working with a client who had an extremely high income, like the the revenue was extremely high, but they were headed for a really bad train wreck is what I would want to call it because they were turning a blind eye to some things that, that were causing them trouble. And it was from arrogance and pride. They could not accept the fact that they had set something up that was not going to be the best thing ever. And so their pride cost them their business. Their pride literally in the end cost them everything because they could not, they just could not accept that it was them that was the problem. And it makes me so sad because they impacted a lot of families by laying off people and and doing things that it it wasn't necessary it Mm. could have been completely avoided but when we let pride in and and I do want to make a comparison between confidence and arrogance Mm -hmm. I'm extremely confident I'm confident in the fact that I can figure out something I'm confident in the fact that I can survive things I've done that I'm confident in my you know my abilities but I'm always willing to learn. I Uh think arrogance is that place that you stop learning, you stop listening, you stop being the best you can be because in your opinion, you have arrived somewhere and we don't arrive. Uh So I think that that's a big, I think it's really sad. That's what I think because the things that happen with us impact other people around us it's not just us. So if I'm being prideful, the people around me are, are impacted by that. I, I, yeah, I absolutely love it. And I mean, you know, pride also is like when you're not listening to your, your employees, your key management team member, because you think you know everything and you, you are the smartest person. None of us is smarter than all of us. Right. And <laughs> And uh, you can put that one too, Sam. I love that. <laughs> none, none, of, none of us is smarter than all of us. You got that, Kim? <laughs> Let me write it down because I do want to write that down. <laughs> I'm not even I, close enough to my pen. <laughs> I'll, I'll text it to you. No, I say okay. that. That's that's something I always say. I, I tell everybody. I'm like, uh, matter of fact, I had a management talk one time and I said, hey, uh, I said, if y'all cannot come up with ideas, I just don't think you should be part of my team because, you know, none of us is smarter than all of us. And and I can't come up with all the ideas. You need to come up with ideas. You know, you need to tell us how we can make this better. Okay. Because I want you to be happy. And if we're doing something that's bad, then, then you're just doing it and you're not going to be happy. I'm like, open, open your mouth. And so, so you can do something that will make you happy, you know? And uh, the, you got to make a difference. And, and, and that's one thing I want to ask you. What do you think about happiness? I think it's a choice more than anything. I think it's something that we can choose no matter what our life looks like, no matter what's going on in our life. I think it's something we choose to see things. We frame it with happiness. Okay. How important is, hap- how important is it ha- happiness? in one's life? I think it's really important. I I would not want to spend my life doing something that made me unhappy. There are things that are not my favorite. There are things I do even in my business that are not my favorite. Uh huh. But I do believe that if I had to do something that made me unhappy every day, I need to figure out a way not to do that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Well, well said over there. All right. So, so another topic that you talk about is be the hero and confidence is sexy. I like confidence is sexy. Talk about that. (laughs) I think confidence is the sexiest thing that you can be. Like, Uh I, I do think that that's, and I mean, true confidence. One of my favorite definitions of confidence is when you walk into the room and you don't have the need to compare yourself to anyone else in the room, that's what confidence really looks like. I get to be authentically myself and, and own who I am, where I am, 
what level I'm on, whatever it is. And I'm still no, like I still have the understanding that I'm worth it, that I am, I am good with where I am right now. I can do something better. I can do something different, but I'm good right now. I, I am good. I want to learn, not arrogant, but I am definitely confident. Confidence is, but, but, but confidence sometimes, being confident can cross over a line, a very fine line between confidence and arrogance, right? What would be your tip to avoid that? Having accountability. I think we all have blind spots. And I think if someone is truly wanting to avoid train wrecks and crossing that line over to arrogance, it takes having people around you that'll tell you the truth. I am not fond of yes men, I'll just be honest. A lot of people, when you get to a certain level, they, they just want to tell you yes, because they want in your good graces or, and I just don't tolerate that. I don't like that. I don't want to be flattered because if you flatter me, I might cross the line to arrogance and think I'm something I'm not. Mm. If you give me a true compliment, you know, then I can be confident that I'm on the right track. But if you flatter me, if you are just telling me what I want to hear, you're going to, you're actually pushing me over the line to arrogance. And I don't want you around me. I want someone who's going to say, you know what, that's, that's BS. You need to knock that off. <laughs> you know, I, I like what you said. A lot of business people, I mean, they don't understand that it's so important to be challenged. Okay. But then they, they get their feelings hurt because, you know, like I told you, business people have pride and they, a lot of times they lose that factor of humility, right? Tell me, I mean, you, you know, you help businesses, you're consulting them. How many times these people get hurt when, when someone challenges them? How, they, how, how much their ego gets hurt? Okay. I'm sure when you go, I'm sure when you go, as a consultant and challenge them, they, they probably want to fire you sometime or, or they don't want to, they don't want to accept it. Well, here's the rule that I go by. And that is you have to love me, but you don't have to like me. I will show up and I will tell you the truth. And if you don't like it, you know, you, you paid me up front for what I am going to tell you. And I'm going to be honest. If you don't like it, I certainly can go home. Your decision is not going to impact me, but I'm sad for you if you don't listen. Because anything I am saying, it's an observation. It's something I'm seeing on the outside that you're not seeing. Mm -hmm. It's something I can give you an experience of. I can show you exactly where the problem is. Or I'm not saying it. I could say, you know, this may be a problem. Let's check this. And if you're not willing to check it, then I already know you're not my flavor because I don't work with, again, I don't work with people who have dollars and no cents. Mm. I just don't want to. I don't have to. I love it. Love it. Love it. The, the one, the one uh, subject, one of the topics that, that really I wanted, I want to ask you and this, you know, and then we're going to move on to something else, but it says what I want to be when I grow up. That's a topic that you did. And that was, I was curious about that. So what is that? I think a lot of people spend a lot of time dreaming about doing something that they never do. And so they flounder around with all the expert advice they get that they need to go this certain route to get this good job, to get this, you know, this good business, this whatever, but they never do what they actually want to do or what is inside of them to do uh -huh. so I think they hit their 40s and 50s and sometimes older sometimes younger but they hit this spot in life where they've done what they were expected to do for so long and then they hit a wall of I really don't want to do this and so I think you go back to that thing of when you were a kid what do you want to you know what do you want to be what do you want to do when you grow up and I think it's it's sad because a lot of times that's what happens. They just, they come to a place in their life where I want something different. 
I think pivots are sexy. Like if you're pivoting for a good reason, if you're learning something different, if you're, you can even change businesses, industries, whatever. You can change that stuff if that's something you want to do. Uh-huh. But when you've done something that was dutiful and expected versus following a dream, I do think that's a sad service for your life. Like, I do think that that's sad. Yeah, I get it. Um, you know, I, I listen to Gary V here and there. And, uh, and you know, he talks about it like all the time. He's like, you know, people, you know, sometimes parents, you know, they, they want their kids to be doctors or lawyers or or do something that they weren't able to do, right? And a lot of people want to live vicariously by through through their kids, right? I mean, I've seen that a lot of time. I mean, if you go to a football practice, you know, or or baseball, or you know, a lot of time the the dads or the moms, the dads really wanted to be that athlete or that star athlete, but they want to live it through their through their kids, and they really push their kids to do that. And sometimes, you know. I mean, I've talked to guys who have, or doctors who went to medical school, but hate being doctors, right? <laughs> and Gary Vee talks about it all the time. He's like, you know, he, well, he uses a lot of curse words. And he said, F them, F your parents, you know, don't do that. You know, do something crazy. And, and I mean, so this kind of resonate to the same thing, right? That what, what you, what, you know, what you wanted to be when you grew up. But let's just say you do that, whatever your parents say. I mean, but you're not unhappy, right? You just show up and you're unhappy. What will be what what will be your point of view? Like, hey, you know, I'm 30, or I'm 28, just graduated school, or my parents want to, I'm 24, or I'm 22, and I'm going to school to become an engineer because that's what my parents wanted me to do. But I hate it. What, what do you think about that? I will be honest. I would not give them good advice. Their parents would not like me because I would tell them to figure out what it is they really want to do. I I think getting clear, we're back to that conversation again. I think getting clear is really what needs to happen for so many of us. Like all of us need to get clear about what we want. And if we don't know what that is, do some exploring, do some stuff that that maybe is outside what you think you can do. I've done things in my life that no one gave me permission to do. No one gave me, you know, the qualifications to do. And I've still done them. So I think it's really, really important. I have a an article in my magazine that I wrote about who are they? Mm-hmm. You know, who are the they you're listening to? Are they saying you have to be certified? You have to have a degree? You have to have whatever it is? Are they, you know, but who are they? Who decided that the royal family was the royal family? Who mm-hmm. decided that the certification that you need is the only way to do something? There are things like doctors. I definitely want to train doctor. Like I don't want someone who who just shows up and puts a shingle out and says I'm a doctor. Uh-huh. But but there's lots of other things that that don't require those things. But we're talked into being qualified or certified or doing something that we don't have to. We yeah. just don't. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I and I totally understand what you mean by that. So. Uh, and I'm going to talk about who are they. Remember that. Who are they? I'm going to write it down because I want to talk about one of my things that I talk about. Who are they? Um, Claire, and then you, you, you know, that's another co- article of yours. Clarity brings progress, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, so you're right. You got to be clear. You got to be clear. While we have the subject, tell us what does clarity bring progress about? Clarity is when you start moving in the direction that you really want to. Clarity is about getting clear about what you really want, what you don't want. Uh-huh. And getting getting clear is where the momentum, the progress, all of that will show up in your life. The clearer you get, the more you get what you want. And I say this with no arrogance, but very much confidently. I say all the time, I get what I want. And it's because I get clear about what I want. I I have not, I have like three things on my list right now that I have not gotten yet. And I do put a big O yet at the end of that Mm -hmm. because I know that 
moving in that direction is exactly what will get me those things. But when you get clear about things, it's quick. It can be really quick, the clearer that you get. And that's, that's one of the thing about this note, a sticky note thing, right? Yes. Yes, sir. And here's the thing about clarity. If, if you come to me and I am clear about what I want and you ask me to do something that sounds fun or that I want to do, but I look at what I really want in life and it doesn't, it doesn't match up. And I don't have the, like some kind of intuition that I need to do that thing. It's easy to say no. It's easy to say thank you, but I, you know, this is not for me right now. Mm. If you don't have that clarity, you're saying yes to a lot of things that are taking away the opportunities that you could be moving forward in the thing that you really want. Got you. I understand. Uh, now, is clarity also goal setting brings you clarity? I think goal setting is a result of getting clear. I think okay. clarity is the beginning because if you're not clear, you can set all kinds of goals, but it's kind of like the football game you were talking about earlier. If I'm not clear that I'm going to the south end of the field, I might end up at the north end of the field and, and not getting what I want. Mm. So it's really important to get clear first. And honestly, most <laughs> I have to be careful. I'll get on a soapbox and I don't want to do that, but I I have a frustration with the experts that come out and say to set goals without bringing the clarity piece in first, because yes, you can set goals and accomplish them, but do you really want to accomplish the thing you're setting the goal for? Because if you don't take time to get clear about it, you may uh -huh. get the, it, it's, I used to tell my boys all the time, be careful what you ask for, because you might get it. Uh -huh. What if you get that goal and it didn't take you where you thought it would take you? I love it. I love it. So, so you, so, so let me, let me get this straight. So you're saying setting goals is great and you should set goals, but you got to be clear. What are you setting those goals for? B because you don't want to set wrong goals. Okay. You think you want this nice house, but is that, I mean, you got to be clear. Do you really want this house? Because what comes with it? Okay. The big mortgage, the big taxes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have 10 rooms, but who lives in those 10 rooms? You're only two of you, you know, is, is, I mean, I'm just saying that house as a, as an example, but is, is that what I'm, am, am I getting it the right? Am I saying it the right way? Yes. Sir. Am I You're understanding it right? You are. Can can I share a short little story about sure, an example please, of please, this? Please, please, please. I set a goal. I got clear, but I didn't get the right kind of clear. I'm going to say that. I was just learning how to do this process. Uh -huh. And I, I got clear about that. I wanted to do, I, I wanted to do this business that I had never been in this industry. And I knew no one in that industry. Uh -huh. But there was a problem that came up in my little small town I was in. And mm -hmm. I wanted to help with the problem because I knew the business. I didn't know the industry, but I knew business. Okay. So I went in to help and ended up staying because I saw they needed help with other things. So I had to learn that industry. Well, in the end of that, I decided I wanted to have that particular industry. I wanted to have a, a business in that industry. I wanted an office building. I wanted it full of people. Those were my goals. And I got those goals. I absolutely got those goals. But one morning when I was watching the sunrise out my conference window, I realized that this very business, the very thing I'd asked for, was going to take my life if I didn't do something different. Because I was working way too many hours. I had not set it up properly. I had not done several things that I should have done for my own sake, like uh -huh. for the health of me. And I, within 90 days, made such a pivot that everyone on the outside looking in thought I had suddenly failed. But what they didn't realize is 
by not having that office building, I there were sixteen thousand dollars a month in just regular things that you had to pay for for it. Sixteen thousand a month is a lot of money. Like I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to to it it was not necessary. It was actually I think I had crossed the line of being arrogant I had crossed the line in this was an outside success thing the same way I talk about you know don't have a Rolls Royce if it if it's not something that fits I think it's the same thing so I think I didn't realize at the time and it really did hurt my pride to to you know sell the building be done yeah. with with that this is one of the best moves I ever made. And profit was enormous because of not doing that. You know, mm. not staying in that thing. And and I could have weighed in on the pride thing and said, oh, no, I'm going to stay because it looks like there's it looks a problem. Good. Yeah. 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 Looks good. Man, that, that, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that story with us. Uh, and thanks. You know, it, it, sometimes it, it takes a lot of courage sometimes to share stories. And, uh, and, you know, people don't understand what is, what, I mean, how powerful it is to be able to share a story. Uh, look, we can sit over here and talk forever, Kim, and I, I want to be respectful of your time. And, uh, you know, so I like to keep this at a certain, um, uh, you know, time uh, thing. And I appreciate you so much for coming over here, sharing things with us, sharing your story, uh, sharing your personal story about, you know, about the, the things you went through. And, and I appreciate it. But before I end this uh, episode, there's one thing that I ask everyone to do. Let's say you end up living 100 years, 100 years, and you know today is the day that 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 you know they, they come to you and they say, Kim, we gotta go. We gotta take you to the next world. Meet you know meet you with your you know get you united with your creator, and you gotta go. But all the books that you've written, all the articles you've written, all the podcasts you've done, all the videos you've done, they all gotta go with you. But here goes a pen and a paper. And I want you, we want you to write three things, three things on this pen and paper. And this can be for your future generation, for the world that to come after. And these can be three things, keys to greatness, your three truths, your three lessons, how life should be, should be lived. What will those three things be? Hmm. I think be honest, be kind. And I think learn wisdom, like learn to be wise. Do you do you mind expanding a, a little bit on be honest, be kind, and learn to be kind? Learn to be. You said what? Learn to be wise. Wise, wise, right? Do you mind? Do you mind expanding a little bit? I think if you're not honest, you will never, you will never do the things that you could do to help people versus hurt them. I think being dishonest causes pain and being honest while it does cause pain sometimes it's the right kind of pain that makes you grow uh -huh. and being kind i think that being kind to other people is is always appropriate even if they're not being kind to you move away from them like you don't have to be ugly to anyone if you can be kind choose to be kind always uh, and learn to be wise. I think you can gain knowledge and not apply it. And I think with wisdom, you you have knowledge, but you also apply that. So learn to actually be wise and not just smart. Awesome. I love it. Before you go, last question of my uh, last thing that I want to say, I want to share your opinion, but I want to ask you your opinion about this. And we talked about it in the beginning of our uh, interview about humility and how important I think it is. What is your definition of humility? Is it important? Should you be humble? And why should you be humble? Because sometimes people say, well, if I'm too humble and, and you know, uh, a lot of people will not take it seriously. A lot of people won't think I'm successful. So, so I, I got to be a little arrogant sometimes. I got to be a little narcissistic sometimes. What is your definition? What, what is your opinion about that? I do not think. I do not think so. I do not think that there's ever an occasion to be arrogant. 
I, I can be confident in what I do and what I know and what I, how I can help you. I can be confident in that. But the humility piece is, let me tell you the story as to why I know this is what you need to learn. Let me tell you about the office building that costs way too much money. Let me tell you about the experience I had so that I can show you that this is what, you know, this is what can happen if you do this. Let me share with you. Let me empower you. So I don't believe we can empower people from a place of pride and arrogance. I believe pride and arrogance is all about us. And when you walk in humility, I believe we can empower people from that place because we can share transparently. We can show up authentically and we can make ourselves vulnerable so that people can you know, see that there's another side and a, a very sexy side mm-hmm. of life, which is you don't, you know, be confident, not arrogant. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Kim, I hope I can bring you back again in the future, talk more about stuff. I, I'm I'm so happy that we connected and and I made a friend through Clubhouse and uh and I appreciate it. You know, I, I hope we stay in touch. Uh, I want you, uh, I know you're doing that summit tomorrow. Uh, send me, send me some information on that. And, and Kim, thank you again. Um, I, I really appreciate it that you, you came, you just, you know, you took my invitation and took time from your busy day. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, and, and, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. And let me just say, you dropped some amazing wisdom in clubhouse. I appreciate it. You are welcome in any of my rooms at any time. That definitely. I if, you, you. if you ever get in one and uh, send me a notification, if I'm not too busy, I'll definitely jump in. Okay. I like, I like being in clubhouse. You know, I do, I do like being in clubhouse, but a couple of things I, I've, what I've learned is sometimes the rooms are too big and, you know, and you, you're not, I mean, your voice doesn't mean anything, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're too small. Okay. And sometimes it just, all this takes too much time <laughs> yes, and, and it just becomes a clutter. And, you know, you got to declutter your life sometimes. I agree. We have a community of probably about 3000 people on there uh-huh. that, that we are connected to and, and we serve. I feel like that that is a way that I can serve right now. May not always be that way, but for, for this season, yeah. We, and, and, you know, one of the reasons I do this podcast, right, is I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I, I, honestly, I'm really busy. Okay. But yes, I do this sir. podcast is because, because I want to, I want to give back, talk to people, amazing people like you share stories and somehow, some way, you know, maybe legacy, maybe I do it for selfish reason. I learn a lot. So I call it like a, you know, a tutorials for me sometimes, but what, you know, it's, it's a give back. Right. And, and I feel like when I'm in the clubhouse, And if I say something, I feel like I just gave back, you know, maybe part of me, I leave a part of me. And, 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 and I mean, you know, I've learned a lot ups and downs, failures, you know, you know, pains, you know, tears and, and, and all that stuff. So so sometimes, you know, I want to share And I mean, please, if you're ever in a room that you think I'm, I'm needed, uh, I'll, you know, send me a text. I'll, I'll give you my cell number uh, offline and, and you can send me a text or send me a notification. If I'm available, I'll definitely jump in and do whatever I can. Well, now the problem with that, Mr. Sam, is that I may be doing, texting you all the time because there's a <laughs> lot of rooms that need you. They need what you've got. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.